to violence. I want to read something that was said to me uh, 23 years ago by Stanley Kubrick, one of our greatest, most brilliant filmmakers. I asked him about whether movie violence desensitizes viewers and triggers violent behavior in real life. These are not new issues that we're dealing with. He says, I don't think it does. I think that man's, I love this sentence. I, lo I think that man's capacity for violence is an evolutionary hangover which no longer serves a useful purpose, but it's there all the same. In that sense, Kubrick does not separate us, does not point to a boogeyman, uh, but talks about the things that link us together. We're on an evolutionary cycle here. And I think it's even, uh, and I think there's an even more important point, he says. It has been demonstrated that even after deep hypnosis in the post-hypnotic state, people will not do what is contrary to their nature, so that the idea that people can be corrupted by a film is, I think, completely wrong. And I think I would go even further. I would say even hypothetically granting that it did, which I'm sure it does not, I should think that realistic violence is less likely to cause violence than the fun violence of James Bond or the Tom and Jerry cartoons in which the aliens lump on the head, shrink, and they're off to the next caper. That kind of violence, Kubrick said, if any, might cause emulation. It's like when young boys were fed nonsense about the glory of war. They might have gone off to war with expectations that didn't turn out to be true, whereas if they had been exposed to brutal, violent war films, they might have realized what was in store for them. Clearly, violent images on television helped shut down the Vietnam War. We would not shut down our exposure to violent, realistic images. That would be an error. Uh, let me, let me uh, shift to religion. Uh, 